It seems like the immovable object of the Bob got hit by the unstoppable force of the Nerf Bat. Find out what's going on if I hereby summon all my imps to join me on my adventures through Marvel Snap. Hey everybody, it's Animal. So we got the newest patch out for this leak and with this one coming out, the big, big nerf is going to be Mr. Blob. Mr. Blob had 18 that Honestly, I wouldn't even call an OTHA. This is like a season patch change, if you want me to be honest. I'm, it's so shocking to see that um, Second Dinner is able to make some of these changes. This is almost a complete rework to how the blob works. So going forward, the blob is moving from a 6 Four to a six zero but beyond that it will now wait, um look at the top card that you have in your deck cool that card and if that card uh, makes it so the bob is still below 15 it'll pull the next card in your deck And we'll keep doing this until it hits 15 exactly, or it goes over 15. So, for example, if you were to hit Destroyer right off the bat, it would stop. Because that would be 16, and it would only hit 16. But if you were to go in, you would hit say she hulk first and then destroyer we go up to 26. the biggest card that you kind of gonna look at this every single time at least where it's right now is the infinox because with the infinox still in the game there is the possibility that it can hit 34. Now, wow, 34 is a huge power. It's nothing that Red Skull haven't been able to get into before. We've just simply a Shuri. So if you if he goes Shuri into Red Skull, you're looking at about 20 for Red Skull. Joe, that's about six more powers, and that's the best that, sh that the blob can do going forward. Also, notable little side note, because of this slight tweak. Um, now, um, Darkhawk doesn't have to worry so much about the blob showing up, because it will stop... For any new deck or destroy new deck when you hit that power. So if you if the first card is again the infinite. So let's say you had five cards left and you draw infinite first off, you'll still have four cards left in your deck. Also, it means that Shadow King basically can make this go down to zero and win the way and if it's a one-on-one -on -one battle. Next up for us is the other card that I don't know yet. And now everybody's saying that this is a buff where it's Celine because she's going from a one negative one to a one two. But in my opinion, it's almost more of a nerf because a lot of times what you're doing with Celine was bouncing her over with the Annihilus and walking up a lane slot 
and I'm not sure if you want to play her down and not bounce her over because now you're basically looking at doing like something like the Hobgoblin or the Green Goblin with her and it's so weird that a uh, plus four power it's not make a card like this thing this one from negative one to this one to, ne to negative one to zero some zero to one or from one to two that with any other card would be a huge sling and make that card basically the most play card in the game But with Selena and how she was being played, I'm not sure that makes a difference. Now on to the buffs. And here's an oldie but a goodie. Destroyer is back to where it used to be. But the weird thing about Destroyer is, I believe Destroyer was like one of the first nerfs that ever happened in the game. Where they thought that 16 was so powerful at a solid lane winner that they had to get rid of destroyer by knocking him down a peg and now it's almost like if you played 16 straight out would you care i'm not sure this is gonna make destroyer come back it's just kind of funny how the power spec of the game has moved that much that destroyer basically at 16 is not a big deal anymore Next up for us is Viper. Viper got changed from a 3-4 to a 3-5. Still does the same exact thing. With Viper, that's an interesting change. Because if you look at that just as a power spike, that's one of the highest power spikes. You're now at the level of Lady Sith. So you might now play Viper just as a power on its own. Playing on turn 3 on an empty vocation and gaining that apply power is nothing to cry about or sneeze about. You're almost kinda doing the worst version of old fashioned wizard. Next buff for us is the Electra. The Electra got moved from a 1-1 to a 1-2. It still does the same exact thing. And this one kind of upsets me. Only because I'm getting tired of second dinner using the fact that a card is the new Poil Club as an excuse not to buff a card. And I know this is technically a buff, but it's not being a buff. Oh yes, I love this variant. I bought the thread. I, I had the gold and I bought it and I pressed the set. And this is what upsets me about her at times too. Uh, because now if you look at ones, basically there's not a one drop left to a certain degree that isn't a bubble one two at this point. These are the one ones in our left, are right down here at the bottom. And all the rest of these ones that are even one one theoretically, aren't one ones, you know. Was, this, are you playing Nova and carrying that it's a one one? If you made Nova one two, would you care? Or wouldn't it be better almost at a one zero? You know, you want this to die. You know. That's the problem. Now it's to the point where one two is just the base stats for a one drop card. It's so sad that you can't have a one one. And I'd rather have a Lecta be a one one, and instead of it destroying a one cost card, imagine if they did it where it destroyed a two cost card. Look at all the twos that you might want to destroy. You got stuff like Invisible Woman. You get close to the end of a con, 
the invisible woman's down, you know that they're playing a moda cello, you play the electro, you pop it, and you giggle. You're tired of seeing Zablu play the electro. You know, you're tired of seeing the where is she? I have to do this alphabetically to get her up. The Angela and how much par she can get. Put down the Electra and destroy her. Uh, two are getting really powerful nowadays. Speaking of the two that's getting really powerful these days. Dagger. Dagger she's getting really powerful. She went from a 2 2 to a 2 0, which seems like a nerf. But now when she moves locations, she gets plus three for each card at the location. So if you move her once to a full location, she becomes a tink well by herself. If you move her twice, she's a 224. There's something to be said about having a 224 bounce around. Next up for us. It's the other two that's fallen next to her, which got a little bit of a buff, but not as big of a buff. Which is Dazzler. Dazzler got moved from a 3-2 down to a 2-2. Two -two. She still does the same exact things, which is really funny because I think at one point she used to have the same exact power, but cough four. So the fact that she's gotten dropped down all the way down to two, and it still doesn't feel like that's a broken ability, shows you that she was over cost for the longest time. The next up for us. We have an interesting card, which is the Hercules. It's the last card that hit the buff list. And what's kind of weird about this is I'm not sure it being a 4-7 matters as opposed to being a 4-6. What's also weird about this is, is that Hercules legitimately just fell out of the spotlight cash. So if you even do think this is a nice thing or an interesting thing for her keys, you can't get him. And it seems like this is becoming more of a pattern for second dinner. And I wish there was some way that you could fix that, do that. Maybe offer something where it, when cards got nerfed or buffed that you could like spend ash keys somehow. Maybe you'd have to waste like two keys in order to get it at that point, but I'm not sure if you could do something like that. I'll understand that they don't want to move him down to three because they want a good move card on each power because that's what Second Dinner said that they wanted to do. But if you want to keep him at four, there's two interesting things that you could do with him at four. Number one, is just make it so that whenever you play a card at Hercules, it moves randomly. So that way it would really help out the move effect. You could play, say, a, a human torch on Hercules and it would move and because it's randomly, there's actually a chance that it can land back them in its own location. But then you get that plus the power. That activation of having a spot where your stock bounces out of it each con is huge. Another thing that they could do if they wanted to keep it at four is make it the complete opposite. Where if your opponent plays into there, it bounces up, but your stuff stays fine, making a defense of the card. While you're protecting the spot, your opponent's got to play two cards on there. Also, one of the things that they couldn't do that wouldn't change this card too badly, but would help out a lot. If it wasn't the first time another card moves here on each turn. If you put the first time another card from each player moves here each turn move it to another location that would actually make it better the number of times that you lose out on hurricane steed anything because of a just a bad coin flip 
is just huge. So those are the nerfs and the buffs. Not a lot in here. I don't think that this is good to knock the blob off of his pedestal. But I think it might bring him down a little bit. Anyways, I want to thank you all so much for watching. And as always, remember, play for fun.